Welcome back to Killer Bites, the place where we talk about all things true crime. Today's case takes place in Japan. I'm Brandy. Let's get into the story. Lindsay Hawker was a 22-year-old from England who had just graduated from university with a bachelor's in biology. After graduating, she wanted to do a bit of traveling and explore the world before continuing her path to pursue a higher education. Hawker began to apply to jobs where she could teach the English language in Japan. She got a visa and accepted a job at a school chain called Nova. Nova was a very large and well-known school in Japan, so this job was great. In 2006, she was officially placed in one of the Nova schools located in Tokyo. She found a home to live in with some other foreign roommates. It was a great setup and situation. Hawker was living her best life, teaching, but also exploring the city, taking in the sights, trying delicious food. She posted about her travels on Facebook to update her friends and family back home. It seemed she was having a great time for the first five months that she was living there. On March 20th, 2007, she was on a train on her way home. While she's on the train, she sort of notices a man staring at her and she felt that something was off. She got off the train. The man who had been staring at her got off at the same stop and started following her. He approached her and told her that she was his English teacher, but Hawker was very certain that this man was not one of her students. But this guy was persistent and kept repeating that she was his English teacher. Then he started asking her questions like, where are you from? What did you study while you were in school? Just common questions you'd ask to get to know somebody. Hawker knew that this wasn't one of her students, so she sort of brushed him off and tried to walk away. She got on her bike to ride the rest of the way home. The guy starts running next to her, trying to keep up with her on the bike, and he's still trying to talk to her and ask her questions. Eventually, she makes it back to her apartment. At this time, the guy asks Hawker if he can have some water because obviously he's exhausted from running the whole way there. Hawker, being the nice person that she was, offered him a drink upstairs at the apartment. They go upstairs and he's still asking her questions. He wants to know if she can give him English lessons. At first, she was hesitant about giving these lessons, but eventually she agreed to do it in exchange for 3,500 yen for a lesson sometime during the week. He was delighted she said yes, and then started drawing a picture of her on a napkin. And next to the picture, he wrote down his email address, whitelover at hotmail.com. He wrote his phone number and he wrote his name, Tatsuya Ichihashi. Hawker wrote on Facebook to her parents about this encounter. She told them, love you lots. Don't worry about the guy who chased me home. Just crazy Japan. Miss you, XXX. And that would be the last post that Hawker ever made on Facebook. A few days after this post, it's March 25th. Hawker went to the local coffee shop to meet up with Tatsuya to give him his English lesson at 9 a.m. They begin the English lesson and everything seems to be fine. At the end of the lesson, he confesses that he doesn't have any money on him to pay for this lesson, but he says he has money back at his apartment. He convinces her to accompany him back to his apartment to get the money to pay her. They take a taxi over to his place. She goes up to the apartment, and that was the last time she was seen alive. That night, she didn't return home to her apartment. Her roommates were worried about her and decided to contact the police. Unfortunately, the police didn't take the first call super seriously and they brushed it off. The next day, Hawker was absent from work and still no one had heard from her. People at her work were worried because she had never been late or absent at work. Her work decided to contact Hawker's family and the police on the matter. The family was immediately concerned. The police go to visit Hawker's apartment and they find the napkin with Tatsuya's drawing of Hawker's face and his contact info. The police decide to contact Tatsuya and visit his home, but they couldn't knock on his door without probable cause. And at this time, they didn't have enough information. So the police had to do some investigating on Tatsuya to see if they could find anything that would allow them to enter the home. 
They found that a few years earlier, Tatsuya got in trouble with the authorities for trying to steal a woman's handbag. So now that Tatsuya had been previously convicted of a crime, they were now allowed to talk to him. They were still not allowed to knock on the door, but they could wait outside for him to come out and then talk to him and question him. At 9.45 p.m., Tatsuya finally exited the home. The police explained that they were there to speak to him about a missing foreign woman. Tatsuya then turned and started running like a bat out of hell. He ran right out of his shoes, but continued in a full sprint in his socks. While he was running away, one of the officers was able to snatch up his backpack, but the police were unable to stop him. Tatsuya got away and ran into the night. The police continued to search for Tatsuya, but were unsuccessful that night. At first, he tried to go to the train station, but spotted the cops outside waiting for him. So instead, he hid out in some bushes. A few of the police officers were later sent up into Tatsuya's apartment to investigate. They found that the apartment was super messy, and throughout this mess and trash, they discovered Hawker's handbag on the floor. They also found that the bathtub had been removed from the bathroom, but it was placed on the outdoor porch. In the tub was a bunch of dirt and sand. Then they looked closer and noticed a human hand coming out of the pile of dirt in the tub. The hand belonged to Lindsay Hawker. Not just her hand, it was her full body buried beneath the dirt. Lindsay Hawker had passed away. With investigating the body, they found that she had been beaten and all of her hair had been cut off. Supposedly, the downstairs neighbors had heard some suspicious noises the night before, but had not reported it to the police. The police found out that Tatsuya had taken many trips to the local gardening store, probably to purchase the dirt and some chemicals to help decompose the body. Two days after Lindsay Hawker's disappearance, on March 27th, her dad and boyfriend flew out to Japan to identify the body. Tatsuya is still on the run and nobody can seem to locate him, but the police are still searching. The police were offering 10 million Japanese yen to anyone who gave information leading to his arrest. Through the following months, many people had called into the police with tips and sightings of Tatsuya, but nothing substantial. During this time, there were about 8,000 supposed sightings of Tatsuya that poured into the authorities. There were hints that he fled to the Philippines. People claimed to have seen him in nightclubs in downtown Tokyo, all sorts of leads that didn't go anywhere. Two years went by and still no arrest had been made of Tatsuya. In two years, the police had not been able to locate him. So where did Tatsuya go that night after he hid out in the bushes on March 26th? Supposedly, he stole a bike and rode a few miles away, hopped on a train, and went to the outskirts of town. He got off the train and made his way over to a convenience store and purchased a small sewing kit and used it to pierce his nose to change his appearance so that police couldn't identify him. He also used a knife and cut himself. He cut off part of his lips and cut off some of the moles on his face. The police and the family of Lindsay Hawker blasted wanted photos of Tatsuya all around Japan, but now his face would be slightly different and he hoped unrecognizable. He later leaves Tokyo and goes to Okinawa, which is a small town and not part of mainland Japan. So he was far away from the crime scene. No one in Okinawa seemed to recognize him, so he thought he was safe staying there. But he wasn't making much money, so he decided to relocate to Osaka. In Osaka, Tatsuya landed a construction job, which was pretty good and well-paying. With the money from his new job, he went and got plastic surgery to change his face so he would be even more unrecognizable to the police. He got his nose done, cheek implants, he got eyelid surgery, he looked totally different and nobody knew who he really was. Then one day, Tatsuya decided to go to Nagoya, Japan to get some more plastic surgery. The day after the surgery, the doctor who performed the surgery was looking at wanted pictures of Tatsuya that police had released with his old face on them. The doctor felt something was off and that his patient might be Tatsuya Ichihashi, the guy the police had been searching for. He had mysterious scars on his face that seemed to add up with the wanted pictures. So the doctor contacts the police. 
Somehow the news found out about the story and put it on blast. Tatsuya saw this in the news and then took off again and tried to leave Osaka and get back to Okinawa. He goes to catch a ferry back to Okinawa, but there wasn't another ferry leaving that night, so he would have to wait until the next day. Someone working at the ferry terminal thought this guy waiting all night and sleeping at the ferry terminal was being sketchy, so he decided to call the police. The police make their way to the ferry terminal and confront the guy. They ask him his name, and he replies that he is Tatsuya Ichihashi. Boom! He confessed, and the police finally got him. He was taken back to Tokyo to await trial. The judge of this trial was Masaya Hota, who claimed that he was disgusted by this heinous crime. He's quoted saying he raped her to satisfy his desire, then tried to cover up the rape by killing her. He then attempted to conceal the murder by abandoning her body. The crime was inexcusable and savage. Lindsay Hawker's father addressed the courtroom and told the jury to show no mercy. At the trial, Tatsuya confessed to the assault and rape of Lindsay Hawker. He said he was trying to keep her quiet, so he strangled her and he didn't mean to actually kill her. He also went on saying that he was sorry and something about how he wishes he could bring her back to life. Tatsuya Ichihashi was convicted of the murder and was sentenced to life in prison. He is still in prison today, serving his sentence. While in prison, Tatsuya actually wrote a book about this experience of hiding from the police and being on the run. The book actually went on to be a bestseller. It sold over 100,000 copies. He ended up making a ton of money from this book. He offered the money to the family of Lindsay Hawker as an apology and a peace offering, but the family refused the money. In 2013, a movie was made about Tatsuya Ichihashi. The movie is titled, I Am Ichihashi, Journal of a Murderer. But however many books and movies come out about Tatsuya, it doesn't matter. He will continue to sit in prison for life. And that is the story of Lindsay Hawker and her deadly travels to Japan. Thank you for watching Killer Bites. See you next time.